that's a song who, which just released uh, a week ago on 12th of April 2020. <laughs> so now is the time to welcome you all, our honor uh, speaker, uh, Pak Yohanes Widodo. Selamat malam, Pak JW. Selamat malam. Good evening. Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Bagaimana di Singapura, Pak? Oh, happy-happy saja. Happy-happy saja. Yeah, very happy. Yang selalu positif, ya? Yeah. Yes. I always say social distancing, no. Physical distancing, yes. Okay. So in the yeah. time when we have to be apart because of physical distancing, we have to be closer socially. Yeah, that's really true. It's not a social, but it's physical distancing. Yeah. So, uh, Professor Johannes Widodo, uh, or we call it Pak JW, uh, it's uh, the first speaker, and we also having uh, Kanita Kasina Ubol from Thailand. Hi, Kanita. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Yeah. How are you there in Thailand, in Bangkok? Oh, yes, it seems like uh, our situation. We hope that might be much better. And we see. <laughs> Come. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kanita. And the other, uh, yeah, the other, the you. last one is Ibu Salma or Ko Salma uh, from Penang Heritage Trust. Yeah. Hi, Ibu Salma. Hello. Apa kabar? Apa baik? Saya <laughs> dua orang kawan dari Malaysia, uh, Mr. Yeah. Papa and also Mr. Wibok Kim. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. So uh, allow me to use some mixed language, uh, English and Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So which one you prefer? I For think everyone. the mix is better. <laughs> yeah. My tongue will be twisted if I have to switch. <laughs> Not to switch directly. <laughs> okay, I think so now it's around 60 persons in this Zoom and it will be coming more. And uh, the other uh, 20 or uh, it's coming to 30 in our YouTube channel. So uh, it's a good time to start. Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, teman-teman, kita akan memulai talk show uh, dengan tadi saya perkenalkan ada Profesor Yohanes Widodo, ada Kanita Kasina Ubol dari Bangkok, kemudian ada Ibu Salma. So my introduce you first. Uh, uh, Pak JW, Professor Johannes Widodo. I think so you are very uh, well known and famous also here. <laughs> for me, I'm a bit. Uh, it's a uh, it's it's honor for for me to be the moderator for you. And so uh, I I also just recognize that uh, you also my senior in the Catholic University to Leuven, but uh, still. Uh, really a different years than me. So really senior and I'm really junior. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm from the 1986-88 generations. Yeah. Somehow I'm so the yesterday afternoon child or we call it anak kemarin sore. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Professor Johannes is graduated uh, Bachelor of Engineering from Parahyangan University and then uh, continued the master degree in KU Leuven also for the architecture engineering, PhD the architecture in University of Tokyo. Right, Pa? Yes. Yeah. And the specialty for architecture history, urban design and studies, and also for the heritage conservation. We learned a lot from uh, Professor Johannes uh, about uh, what we have to do in Semarang. It's uh, his hometown in Indonesia. And uh, there are a lot of program there uh, toward uh, the World Heritage Cities for Sumara. Yeah. And uh, the, the unique test on form by Johannes is uh, he also having, I think, so I believe he's having various awards, many of it, but uh, he always only wrote uh, the two of it. So it's about the excellent prize winner in the international essay competition of. Uh, Tokyo as international city. And then uh, the second one is the Outstanding Lecturer Awards from NUS. I think this is the way why you choose NUS, not the university in Indonesia, ya, Pak? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, active in many organizations, the Asian Cultural Heritage Award. And now uh, 
the three of the speaker, including me also, is active for ACA, the Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance. Ya, ya jadi Pak Yohanes Widodo, kita tahu beliau latar belakangnya sangat arsitektur, tapi sangat khusus juga uh, tentang uh, sejarah, sejarah arsitektur, urban design studies, dan juga bidang pelestarian dan aktif di banyak kegiatan terkait dengan heritage management. Ya. Itu mengenai Pak Yohanes Widodo. Saya lanjutkan, and then uh, for Kanita Kasina Ubol, uh, they also really active in Siamese Heritage Trust so under the Siam Society, under the Royal Patronage. And uh, the last year, we were together in Bangkok where we formed the ACHA, yeah, the Asian Cultural yeah. Heritage Alliance. That maybe you can also introduce for all of us here about what is ACHA. Yeah, and the long experience from you is in the cultural organization management for art and culture, history, the tourism, heritage management, and the important one is for the advocate, the heritage protection, the cultural heritage policy and law. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, for for us, it's really important uh, background. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Untuk Indonesia, kita memang sangat memerlukan orang-orang seperti uh, Ibu Kanita ini ya, karena latar belakangnya sangat kompleks mengenai bagaimana uh, pengolahan heritage, pengolahan pusaka, seni dan budaya, sejarah dan juga pariwisata, juga tentang bagaimana hukum advokasi mengenai perlindungan pusaka. Ya, selanjutnya yang ketiga adalah Ibu Salma. Ibu Salma... <laughs> I think we already know it's other more than 20 years, yeah. I think in this monitor, there are many, many friends from more than 20 years of friendship, yeah. <laughs> ada Ibu Sita juga. <laughs> ada Ibu Salma, pasti ada Ibu Sita. <laughs> so, Ko Salma, uh, it's, uh, now is uh, well known as the author and the publisher based in Penang. Yeah, but starting... I think uh, similar with us, yeah, in the BBBI, it's uh, three decades uh, in the Penang Heritage Trust, starting from honorary secretary and then becoming a president of Penang Heritage Trust. And this time I already start to think that uh, there is no other person can replace you because <laughs> you are very strong in manage the Penang Heritage Trust. But now, um, you becoming the vice president to support uh, the younger generations uh, lead the Penang Heritage Trust. And uh, I believe that you also uh, have the spearhead the movement of the World Heritage Listing of Jostal and also Malacca in the year of 2008. And uh, the interesting for us is uh, about uh, the publication of the books that uh, you set up the Areka books on the year of 2005 to publish a book on local history, the heritage architecture, environment, and also visual arts. And the 2016, this is what I heard from you more now, is about to protest against the coastal reclamation and transport mega project that threaten Penang's uh, cultural landscape and also sustainability. And the last thing I heard from you that uh, since this lockdown era, that uh, you compose a song about environment. <laughs> so this is really complete, yeah? <laughs> Let me uh, introduce you in Bahasa Indonesia that uh, Ibu Salma adalah sebuah, seorang tokoh pelestari dari Pinang Heritage Trust di Malaysia dengan banyak kegiatan untuk mendukung penominasian World Heritage City yang uh, diberikan akhirnya kepada Melaka dan Jostown waktu itu adalah tahun 2008 dan dia juga aktif uh, mendirikan percetakan yang namanya Areka Books banyak sekali buku-buku penting terkait heritage yang dihasilkan dan sekarang sedang aktif untuk melakukan mungkin kita sering mendengar di Jakarta tolak reklamasi nah di sana dalam bahasa Melayu adalah uh, tolak tambak ya <laughs> Jadi sama juga untuk keprihatinan terhadap uh, kelestarian uh, saujana yang, di, yang terancam uh, dengan adanya program-program reklamasi. So, now uh, we come to a decision uh, for the talk show. Uh, is there anything that you want to say about uh, the update from uh, your side? Uh, the topic is now is about 
uh, what is our tips on the conservation effort uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic? So since in the morning we heard a lot about uh, the pandemic is really also having the relation with the history, also having the uh, relation background of uh, how we have to conserve uh, our heritage. But uh, now in this session, we also would like to know more about uh, the updates from your country. Is there anything specific or unique that we can learn? Uh, because uh, we also in the same region that we believe we have a similar root among us. So is there any updates from uh, Singapore, Professor Jewe? Uh, I think the this is not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> we have been, you know, flu has been with us for thousands of years. Uh, this mm -hmm. is one of them. So mm -hmm. it will pass them away. We have experienced 2003 when we have uh, SARS. And mm -hmm. in 2006, we have H1N1. Mm -hmm. Now we have a bigger one. But if we survive this one, we'll be getting stronger. So I will see that this is actually is not a disaster. And of course, economically, there's a lot of impact. I heard Air Asia will have to merge with Malaysia Airlines. Uh, and then maybe some budget flight cannot fly anymore. Mm -hmm. And some people say it's about new normal. It means that after this COVID, maybe in 2021, 2022 onward, the world will not be the same anymore. We will not be able to return to the previous uh, years. So I think this morning I have uh, another talk with friends in, in Saraya and Trisakti this morning. And in that talk uh, this morning, I say, well, if you're talking about heritage, actually heritage doesn't have, doesn't get any impact from COVID. If we take heritage seriously in the correct definition of heritage. <coughs> the problem is because for so long, we are so engrossed and so taken by the connotation of heritage as commodity, heritage as tourism object. Mm. And this is creating a lot of depression and problems because we think, well, because of this COVID, then of course we cannot make money from our heritage. Yeah. Nobody will come to Bali anymore or to Bangkok. It's all because of money. But in fact, I think heritage is nothing to do with that. Heritage is something to do that we shall inherit for the future generations that we receive from the past generations. So we, we are not the owner of heritage. We are only here to pass on from the previous generations to present to the next one. So therefore, there is no impact to heritage. So I think that is the positions. So if say you ask me what is the latest situations in Singapore, well, it's good news for heritage because there is no constructions, mm. there is no demolitions, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no demonstrations everywhere. So everything stands still, stuck. And that is a very good situation in terms of the physical heritage. Mm -hmm. Even the environment is better. You see, the ozone zone is closing. The blue sky is appearing in Jakarta. Right? And even in, in Delhi, the, all this pollution issue is disappearing. So it's a positive sign to the world. The world is healing. And I think this process that we are going through, uh, a lot of things talking about the uh, social media, uh, not social distancing, right? So still closing up. It's also healing to our relationships, uh, to people that never thought that we are too busy to, to do whatever we want. Now we are sitting here trapped in our home. But our mind is traveling across the world. We are crossing the boundaries. There is no more Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, everywhere. All the world has become one. We have the same problem. We have the same fate. So it's good for humanity. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of optimism is important. And also in the personal <laughs> level, I think if you are depressed, then you will get flu. But if you are happy and optimistic, having coffee every day, Every morning you have an espresso, in the afternoon you have coffee to brew. Well, then your immune system will be higher than normal. So optimism posting immune system. So I think that is the things that probably needs to be, uh, you know, 
taken seriously because we are not talking about desperate things. We are talking about something that is a uh, is good and new opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's oh. not specifically a report about Singapore, right? But I think this is just what I feel now. But I think this is true, yeah. I mean, this is really a positive sign coming from Professor Johannes mm -hmm. that uh, we should also uh, take this as the inspiration for all of us, yeah. Uh, take mm -hmm. the positively that uh, we appreciate what is happening right now in the side of really a positive thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, the high clad is a uh, for the conservation, this is really a good condition in terms of uh, no demolition, no construction, and also uh, the nature is uh, protected. Yeah, it's time more. to take stock, actually, what we have, <laughs> yeah, reflect this is what is missing, <laughs> what to do after this. So it's a pause. So during the pause, it's a reflection. It's a, it's a yeah. very, very positive for, for conservation. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the the good point from you is about uh, heritage tourism, and this okay. is also a question come to Kanita because uh, it's talk about uh, the tourism in Bali and also Bangkok. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. how is it uh -huh. Bangkok now? Uh, okay, in the situation in Bangkok, like uh, okay, uh, our our life still like uh, still continue. Maybe only fifty percent, right? Okay, some of government office they still work. Okay, they asked for the museum, the library to close until the end of this month, and we're gonna see how the situation. And for the business office, they I think they work from home, but work from home not everyone can do can do that, mm -hmm. right? Just some certain uh, work. Uh -huh. Okay, back to our situation. Okay, so I'm society. We are cultural organization, and we do have. Uh, museum, we do have library, so we close, completely close, right? But something nice that we can, like, uh, okay, this has happened in three months, right? And the situation in Bangkok still not that too much serious, but okay, everyone warning for serious to protect themselves. And we, like, uh, in the cultural management, we have time to think. Like uh, Professor Vidodo just says, uh, heritage and tourism should not be the same thing. I do agree with that idea. Heritage is heritage. What you're going to protect, you have to protect, right? And for tourism, if you would like to promote, it's something else. No need to mix together. And in, in my idea, this is a good time to like uh, check our stock, what we have, uh -huh, what we support to do, and what we do bad thing in the past, what we do good things uh, we should think about that again. It's good time to think about the policy because uh, the thing that I always think that, okay, we need to do more at once is the, uh, the, the law, the rules. Sometimes the rule is behind the, the case. Like us now we have to think that everyone now posting everything on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, you may notice that, like uh, in, 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 in Thailand, I noticed that they have some kind of the uh, tradition, traditional Thai food that we haven't seen for a long time. Then now people try to bring it back, back to the small channel, to the YouTube, to whatever. And we need to think that in the future, how we going to handle with the copyright. This set recipe, okay, it's a heritage, it's a... Uh, uh, tangible, in, uh, intangible heritage, how we can protect. But it's a good time for us to have to tap chance to see this kind of thing come up. I think it's nice. But I don't know what, what, what do you think about that? What happened in Bali? Yeah, I think it's similar as a, a tourism yeah. crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And this is interesting also to know how is uh, the Bangkok people uh, uh, play the role for, is there any, any creativity for the people for having, uh, I mean, to increase their economic situation because uh, it, it is dropped when the uh, yeah, yeah. coronavirus. And uh -huh. is there any creativity uh, now doing by the people who uh, work in the tourism business? Mm -hmm. when they could not do the activities anymore. 
Yeah, they try to looking for something else, right? We mm -hmm. get warning that this situation cannot be needed in three months, in six months. It might be two years, three years. Uh, they have to think how we, uh, they're going to survive. Tourism is still important. You know, you can enjoy in the small uh, tablet, small TV channel. But mm -hmm. the real thing is the thing that people would like to touch, people would like to see. Tourism have to be have to come back uh, because our life, life of the people, we, we love journey, we love to see things, we we love adventure, right? Uh, and this this thing is still uh, we we may not come back exactly the same way, but how? Uh, and this is the good time for us, for everyone around the world, to think that how we can manage how we can present during this period that, okay, present the good thing in your country. I just noticed that uh, I check uh, what, like some country, they have very good website to promote themselves this in, during this period. Like uh, people cannot travel and how they can uh, uh, still invite people, still put the idea for, uh, for everyone that, hey, whenever this finish, please come back. We travel together again. This is the thing that they try to share up people that I still have in mind of everyone. Once we're still stuck at home, we would like to see things outside, right? And for us, for the, the, the cultural people, for the heritage people who work on this field, we need to think of how we can present the thing that we have in hand through the channel that we have now. Actually, I like the idea somehow, like uh, if it happen, if it not happen like this, we may don't have chance to use Zoom. I think that we, we like a much closer now, uh, physical distancing, but in the way. You see, we can uh, talk with you, we can have a meeting like this, just you, I don't know how long that you form this uh, uh, project, right? but not take time. Last year when we have time, when we do the conference, seem like a Kuncharuni have to be busy for the whole years, right? But in this case, easier, easier. And people can uh, participate, not too difficult, right? Around the world, you see? This is one good thing that I see. Uh -huh. uh, in the, what? In the best thing, or we have some good things too, like and how we can use it. Uh -huh. This is a time that we need to think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah, I mean, so I have uh, the red line. So also between uh, Professor Johannes Widodo and you, that uh, there is a uh, borderless now among us in this world. And then uh, now is how to make the creativity in this uh, difficult situation. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had also some uh, museum now also start openings uh, in the virtual visit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some others uh, no, it's really productive for uh, making a book mm -hmm. or uh, yes, all other things that can do without uh, go outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah even downloading books. Yeah. No, most yeah. of yeah. the library yeah. even yeah. some of the publishers. <laughs> Just give everything uh -huh. for free. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. It's yeah. talking about the book is also the, is uh, the next to Ibu Salma. So is there any uh, intention Areka book, of you give Areka me a books? free publications, Areka? <laughs> well, Areka is, um, I think it's a bit slowing down, but of course my husband, Pat Lubis, is still, he has, he's still writing a few books. But I now uh, try to move to music because it's oh. a long time. Whereas music, you can just, uh, you know, people can listen to it in three minutes. So it's, it's a faster way of getting to an audience. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, or to, to get the message across, you know. But oh, no. uh, can you do TikTok now? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can do. <laughs> I have to do that. So, you know, okay. Uh, I know there's a there's a lot of optimism expressed by uh, uh, Professor Johannes, but uh, I'm not so optimistic because you know we ha we have been looking at the environmental situation and in fact the climate crisis is going to be much worse you know and the rate we are going and this may not be this is definitely not the last pandemic 
In fact, mm. that, that is the, the pandemics are going to get more and more frequent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this time, maybe we are locked down for half a year, maybe one year. But who knows about the next one? And this mm -hmm. is because of the way that we have been treating uh, mm -hmm. the environment, uh, wildlife, uh, you know, um, and also not, not caring about the climate. So I think our generation has been so selfish and people, you know, they just travel around the world. And um, so heritage has been very much tied up with tourism because we think that tourism is a source of revenue. But mm -hmm. obviously, it cannot go on like this. And now we have a chance to think. We have a chance to see how, without human beings, the environment mm. can heal. <laughs> you know, without, when everything comes to a stop, it, it's a breathing space for the earth to heal itself. But it needs more than just one month or two months or three months. The earth will need a few years, you know, years and years to heal. And we definitely have to slow down our rate of activity. But you see yeah. what happened like in Wuhan is that once they said, okay, now the lockdown is lifted, everybody <coughs> is back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then people will be trying to catch up. They try to catch up in terms of the economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the, the biggest challenge during our time, one is, uh, climate, of course, climate change, which will continue to happen. It is continuing to happen. Um, even after this pandemic, it will still get worse for the next generation or even our generation. And then secondly is um, biodiversity loss. Mm -hmm. Loss of biodiversity, how at the rate that so many species are going extinct. And then um, thirdly is that um, we, we, because we haven't realized uh, what is happening. So the business as usual is going to just get restored. You know, it will just go back. Everybody wants to go back to the way things were. So um, if we do not restructure the society, uh, the, third, the third challenge is the wealth inequality. Mm -hmm. uh, and wealth inequality is one of the big challenges in this world. So if we don't do something about that, um, then the business will go on in the in the same way, and and then uh, you know we are just uh, creating a disaster, many disasters. I mean, the the disaster is already there for people who are affected by extreme weather, typhoon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sea level rise, and very hot summers, you know, while the fires and all that. But it will affect the poor people the worst right? The rich people can still go into mm -hmm. the house which is heated yeah. or air-conditioned. Air mm -hmm. uh, they can still run away. They can still go away. They can still have enough food. But for the poor people, uh, they don't have enough food to last this lockdown. Mm -hmm. So they, it's, it's very difficult on them. And, uh, and if, we, if things get worse in terms of environment, it will affect poor people even more, but because of the wealth inequality, so we, so long as that, that wealth inequality is there, then it's very hard for us to change the mindset because we are still pursuing uh, um, a dream, which is that everybody can have more and more, but actually the, the earth is having less and less, the resource, <laughs> resource depletion. Um, so, we, it's kind of what, what we see is a kind of a temporary deglobalization. You know, we have been globalizing to the extent that even things that we can grow in our own country, sometimes we export from so many, from so far away. So this, when, when uh, something like this happens, so the supply chain is disrupted. So even though you can make something, but because something is missing, because you got it from far away instead of from nearby. So you have this long supply chain, the supply chain is disrupted. So we have to actually focus more on local economy. And local economy means that you grow, I think Indonesia, you're still growing your own food, but Malaysia, we're importing so much food. And uh, that means you try to make you, you know, produce things that you can use locally. And the local economy, it comes together with um, how do you promote the local value. So 
heritage actually has a role to play. That means we have to stop thinking about heritage as for tourists, but mm. heritage is a way for us to transmit our own mm. values. Mm -hmm you know, to the children or to the people around us. Mm -hmm. and that should be the main focus of heritage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there is two aspects of heritage, right? The yeah. two mm -hmm. in one. You cannot mm -hmm. separate the intangible and tangible mm -hmm. heritage. You know, mm -hmm. And yeah. I think the intangible now is, is become more important than the tangible. Mm -hmm. I think this is um, uh, um, one thing that I, I need to, to highlight as well, that, you know, uh, also, from there is a question from Harry. Harry, yes, from asking Harry's asking about the future of heritage sites in case the situation will be longer than expected. And looking back to history, what lesson could we learn from these situations? Well, we learn from major disaster like by like Fukushima, for example, the nuclear disaster, and also tsunami, also in Aceh, also in Cave, and different parts of the world. So what happened is from East Asian cases we see that the thing that is unbreakable, that cannot be destroyed, or the people of Aceh, or the people of Fukushima, is the intangible heritage. How they're still continuing the celebrations, the processions, annual procession in Fukushima, just one year after the opening, even in the middle of the ruins. How people in Aceh, building up their life, and always celebrating, thinking, thanks God, our mosques are still stand there. So the, the faith that we have is something that really has become the, showing us the importance of this aspect of intangible heritage. So I always believe that the things that is permanent, the key to really resilience and agility of human being for the survive, is that, that we believe in the permanence of the intangible. Well, the tangible is temporary. It can be destroyed, it can be broken, it can be restored, it can be reborn. You know. And then asking about your questions on this, um, uh, uh, Harry, about the, the lesson from the history. If you're talking about environmental issue, it's not the first time that we are facing this disaster. You see, Angkor is the biggest city in the world during that time. And Angkor was destroyed by itself because of deforestation mm -hmm. and because the use of water, because the expansions of the rice field in the plain. So they took us all the water and the, you know, the, the dreams to have this water city at the middle and so on. So it, it destroyed the nature, it disturbed the balance with the nature and slowly it's become weaker. And then the enemies start to attack Angkor and Angkor is just gone completely. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of lessons that we sometimes we, we always forget that uh, we, we put too much emphasis so far on the, the preservation and conservations of, of, of heritage, uh, physical heritage, of the tangible heritage, but pay so much, in, so, so little attention to the soul yeah. of the heritage and the soul of the heritage is belong to the people, belong to the community. It's not belong to the city, not belong to the morphology of the city. So that's why I have this, if you ask what to do next, what happened after this, the new normal. There are four things and five things that I think is very uh, important points. Yes, if we want to keep our heritage for the next generations, it has to be, an, it has to have an economic viability. Without economic viability, there is no point to keep the heritage. It's no point to, to pass on to the next generation. It's so expensive. We cannot just spending money for this. There's something that is more essential, basic needs and so on. Economic viability. The second is cultural authenticity. So it's no use to pass something that is fake. Mm -hmm. There is only lost the soul. It's just the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay that the, the our temple is destroyed by tsunami, right? But our ritual is still going on. It's okay that our mosque is completely erased, but we still pray five times a day. So that is the, the cultural authenticity, regardless what kind of form that will be taken uh, later. The third is the social inclusivity. Just take what you need, not what you want. Don't be so greedy that mm. you want to take everything. 
<laughs> if you buy a pen, now ah, we have this plastic pen. I just throw this away and I buy a new pen. Yeah. Why can't we learn from the past when we only buy the refill and still use this for next time? And you have so many pens from conference, you have many back from every <laughs> conference. Why don't we collect that and send it to Africa? Or send it to Bangladesh. You just pay DHL or whatever, it's very cheap needed. poster. Right? It's about social uh, uh, solidarity, social responsibility, and also social justice. Mm -hmm. right? I, I say that social inclusivity. The fourth okay. important point is environmental sustainability. Okay. Reduce, reduce, recycle. Now we have additional two. Refuse and rot. Refuse means we dare to say no more plastic, no more aluminum, no more steel, no more glass. Why? Because the carbon footprint to produce glass, concrete, aluminum, plastic is enormous. So if we really want to change, well, we have recycled materials. We can reuse some elements and so on. And then the, far, the, the last one that is less important, but still important, is the physical integrity, where architecture, aesthetic, form, you know, and then the, 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 the harmony is still important. So these five things, I think, is the things that we need to, to, to think holistically as one. Economic viability, cultural authenticity, social inclusivity, physical integrity, and environmental sustainability. I think that is, in theory, the things that we can use as um, that we learn from the past. Yeah. That may guide us into the next steps of our you know, creation of policies or our profession mm. and so on in terms of heritage. Yeah, I think so. This is true. But I mean, so in the year of 1990s, uh, we start to, to understand also there is a shifting of paradigm, even from UNESCO, that is mm. not only the physical or fabrics that. Uh, we learn or implement in the conservation, but how the value, how is the intangible things uh, and the authenticity is coming not from the physical things. Yeah, I think so. this is really uh, supported by explanation by Professor Johannes. And uh, we now start to understand in this uh, difficult situation of the pandemic, the intangible as also mentioned also by Kanita, is really important and how to mm -hmm. implement it is mm -hmm. again back uh, to the people themselves mm -hmm. how they mm -hmm. make the creativity for implementing this. but mm -hmm. there is also um, uh, i'm wondering what's happening uh, in malaysia uh, according to ko salma that is uh, ibu salma is uh, uh, involved a lot in the world heritage is there any uh, i mean sir any things that you can share about uh, the world heritage uh, conservation in this current situation? It has been quite stable for mm -hmm. the last you know, few years, but of course there is still a small scale um, erosion of heritage in the sense that you know, there's a lot of uh, like people have to move away, uh, the, the loss of the old business of people you know, getting old and then they stop doing something and also, uh, you know, illegal works that, that compromise the character of heritage buildings. But other than that, uh, it's quite stable. And um, so that's why I, I'm not so involved in that, but I'm more involved in trying to stop the big projects, okay. which affect the, the whole island. Um, and Penang Heritage Trust still carrying on with the activities, you know, the talks and then the workshops, um, more, more on the education side. Uh, so, of course, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. And every year that we don't do the maintenance, we have to catch up sometime because the roofs start to leak. And, you know, of course, things, the plants start to grow on the roof and things like that. And that is uh, something that is, there's always decay. So it's a kind of entropy. So if we don't do anything, the heritage starts to crumble. Mm. But it takes some time. So 
we, we always, it's like the frog that is in a boiling pot, right? So mm -hmm. when, the, when the water is getting warmer and warmer, and eventually it will boil. So eventually everything will, will be, you know, it's not, not possible to save it anymore. But in the meantime, because it's happening so slowly, so <laughs> you think that the frog doesn't jump out of the pot yet. And the, the same thing with uh, well, a lot of the things, a lot of the situation that society is in. We are in a boiling pot and the pot is getting warmer and warmer, but it hasn't boiled yet. So we th still think it's okay until we, we become cooked inside. We become a cooked frog. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Ibu Salma. Can I back again to Professor Johannes? So about the uh, all the five things, uh, economic viability, cultural authenticity, social inclusivity, environmental sustainability, physical integrity. And uh, the, the big question is uh, for us as uh, heritage practitioners uh, about these five things. Uh, yes. What kind of uh, each of the role that we can contribute for okay. each of I think one things? very important role is to to do educations. Oh. Education yeah. is the key. Oh. Why? Because the carrier of this message is for unto us, to our children, uh -huh. to the next generations. Uh -huh. So our job that we are still living now is to prepare the one who will take over this long distance marathon to oh. save the world, to save uh -huh. our heritage, uh -huh. to put up values. So the values happen in the family and also in the community. Mm -hmm. So our role actually is really not just us, but also the government, everything is focused on education. That's why UNESCO, UNESCO, yeah, it's always being mistakenly taken as a uh, tourism branding. But UNESCO has nothing to do with tourism. UNESCO is but United Nations Organization of Educational, but Culture, Mm -hmm. through the scientific way. So it's, it's about knowledge, it's about education. Oh. So that's why why we put our object, Penang, oh. Malacca, uh, Sawah Lunto, all the cities of Borobudur into the list. Why? Because it should be the textbook. It should be the okay. tangible evidence <laughs> for the educational purpose for the next generations, not for prostitutions not for making money, not to be sold and destroyed. So we, we have nothing left for the next generations. If we mess up with Malacca, well, Malacca is already messed up. Penang is already messed up. Maybe the only way is just to return to the basic now. Maybe we need to delist a lot of sites that is mistakenly perceived or hijacked by the local governments, by the state government, by the, by the capitalist, even by the populist, that it's merely just become, you know, political tools or economic tools or even commodity. So I think the, the real things that I really want to push is youth education, children education, how to put back ethics and empathy how to fall in love again to the traditional food, how to fall in love again to the martial arts, to yeah. the house, to the kampung life, even not just kampung, but even the present day life, because even the old school, how to, to, to respect our grandma, how to respect old things, how not to waste resources. So I think to answer your, your statement, I think, one thing that we need really to focus in the terms of heritage is about educations. And we can use UNESCO as a platform, as one of the platform, uh, the principles and so on, but refocus UNESCO to the original missions, not to tourism. There is no T in the word UNESCO. There is no tourism in yeah. the world of UNESCO. Although it's okay to have tourism, but it's something else. It's nothing to do with tourism. Don't try to make 100 Bali in Indonesia. <laughs> but you have to develop uniqueness of one million villages, one million kampung, one million cities in Indonesia yeah. to be 
to be on its own identity, to develop its own personality. And this persona, personality, is the key to so-called the, so the successful um, cultural heritage conservation. If you lost persona, everything is make up, everything mm -hmm. is botox. Yeah, you're right. Whatever happened to this, you know, mm -hmm. big sign? Well, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, alun, alun. <laughs> You're not stupid, right? We know that there is very beautiful beach. We know that it's Masjid Agung. We don't need that big, super big lettering. So because of this mindset, and you can re uh, return all of this back to the basic by education in all levels, but especially the younger generation. If we fed up with the younger, uh, old generation, let them pass, let them die. But we cannot afford to forget our own children. Our next generation will take over from us if we really want to continue these civilizations. Thank you, Professor Johannes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope uh, our uh, government representative is also here to listen mm -hmm. to the concern. This is mm -hmm. really true that uh, not to compete uh, hundred of Bali for everywhere in Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how to say authenticity if you have a copy and any copy, I don't want to go there. Yeah. I want to have yeah. one very simple yeah. kampung food, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. very authentic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how is in Bangkok? Can you hey, yeah. Uh, okay. I think that uh, now is good chance that we can present our authentic through the all kind channel of the Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever, right? And now it seems like uh, everyone can learn the same thing around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we just today, and I think that we should start to like uh, ask the question. We should send the question that to our government, to the government around the world. Every country have their own heritage, right? Tangible, intangible. How they gonna manage for the next generation? How they gonna do from today? Because the world changed, right? Everything changed from the system that they have done before. Something new come up. How the government gonna do? How the what kind of the policy they have to think about that? Uh, how they're going to ma manage the, the site, the heritage site, how they're going to do it in different way. Uh, and also everyone who involved in the heritage, in the cultural field, how are we going to do in, for this situation? How are we going to survive? How we can keep the authentic? How we can keep our tradition and still pass this thing to continue to the other generation. Now it's time for people to go back to be thinking about what they miss in the past. They may enjoy for the new thing, new life. Mm. Uh, new York, Paris, Milan, maybe their, 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 their aim, their target, right? But now I think that they have, once they sit in the house, in their house, nah, they need to like uh, stay with their family and how they, the, the among themselves, they have discussion, they may have something, some question come up, the thing that they may learn from one generation to another generation. I think, I think this, this is a good time for everyone to go back to their root uh, and, and maybe bring it back, bring it the thing that we might forget already. We maybe don't know how to use the, what, some kind of herb, Maybe in the family, they can uh, bring that back too. Like, uh, this is a good thing. And also everyone in the field of the, like, uh, like uh, people like us in the cultural organization, how we can do. I think that I would like to send the question to everyone. Like, uh, we have to think together because it seems like uh, the world is more narrow now because we can communicate across the world easily. Uh, and they can see us, they know us, what we have, what they have, everyone know, uh -huh. and how we, how we can work together. The world, the global, maybe can be just one for everyone. We stay together, how we can share, share experience, and do everything in, in the way that we support to do for the next generation, how we can keep this. This is a, like a not easy homework, but should be homework for everyone, not just one person, not just one government, but everyone. Mm -hmm. 
America. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I think that Professor Vidoto already say something that in my mind, he say it out very okay. nicely. Well, there is a question uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. from Opita. Yeah, I, I read the questions yeah. there. Yeah, um, it's, I think how, it's a continuation about uh, your explanation about education, uh, Pak Johannes. Yes. How? So how to okay, educate, I simply uh, say it's all about education, how to teach. I always admire one of the Indonesian's teacher. There is very, very, uh, give us a very important uh, uh, recipes how to educate our next generations uh, to everyone. It's Kiajar Dewantoro. Everybody know about uh, in Indonesia, Kiajar Dewantoro, Tuturi Handayani is used oh. as a logo and uh, but it's only not just Tuturi Handayani. Tuturi Handayani means uh, uh, from behind, uh, empower, uh, empowering from behind. And the second principle is in Matteo Mangun Garso, at the middle, giving motivations. So be one of them. At the middle of the students, in the middle of our children, be one of them, be equal to them, and give them motivation as equal. And then the third one is in Matteo Mangun Garso, in the front, giving examples. So everyone can follow your good examples. So you mm-hmm. have to stand in front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm give an example, to set a good example, so your children, your younger generation can follow your good examples. So you have to be good yourself. You don't set a bad example. It's also very for politicians, for presidents, for governor, for whoever, don't give set a bad example. Mm-hmm. Right? And the second is at the middle, you have to be equal to the rest. You don't be so arrogant. We are not the most important things. We learn together to build their motivations. And from behind, we push forward to help those who don't understand, those who are weak. We have to empower them. We look for different methods, different ways. If they need money, we give them money. We need food, we give them food. If they need knowledge, we need knowledge. We don't just help the the strongest children. We have to pay more attention to those who cannot help themselves. And it's not just talking about the family also, but also in the family of, of nations, uh, how we, we have to treat uh, each other. So I think that answer of education, how to educate these three principles by Ki Hajar Pewan Toro, for those who don't understand, just Google, uh, how these principles is, is, I think it's very valid, I think especially for, for the moment. And then the second, of course, for education, for the next question, Dini, we ask questions about the, uh, uh, the, the ordinary people, the heritage is something that has to be regenerated. Just, well, I think they know better than us. We have to learn from them. So we don't, we cannot think that they are stupid. We are the stupidest person because we are so away from the community. So I think the, the, the other way around, we have to treat ordinary people. We need to treat kampong people. We need to treat slum dwellers. As smart people, why? Because in the slums and squatters with a very little minimal resources, they can survive. And even they can create happiness with that limitation. But how? I cannot do that because I, I, I never live in the slums. But those who used to live in the slum understand, will understand how to do that. So I think uh, to answer uh, Dini questions, you have to, to, to reverse. The, the questions, how we can learn from them, how we can bring our students to understand the position of the weakest. Why? Because the key to successful education is empathy. And how to put up empathy is by immersing yourself, by push our children to the swimming pool. So they have to learn to swim. They have to understand how nice is the weather in the mountain by bringing them to walk in the mountains. So that's why don't push them into, into a, a car every day. Let them walk, let them buy, use bicycle. To, to, yeah. to, that is, I, I think, think the thing. Also similar, uh, like uh, the God pushed us to this COVID-19, yeah? But, so yes. <laughs> it's like Same. children. We are, we are <laughs> having lessons from God now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the time is now is uh, five minutes more. Yeah, I think now is uh, the time for for me to invite you all for uh, 
the last uh, key point from each of you. But uh, before of that, uh, please allow me because there are several uh, friends. Now it's already uh, hundreds of people. So, uh, it's the maximum capacity of uh, Zoom for uh, joining us. And there are some others in the YouTube. Uh, some of them is asking, uh, can I translate uh, briefly in Bahasa Indonesia? So allow me to do that uh, in brief. Uh, jadi Ibu dan Bapak, saya mencoba uh, merangkum sedikit sebelum uh, ketiga pembicara ini akan menyampaikan kata kunci terakhirnya. Jadi topik uh, sesi talk show ini memang sangat menarik, ada beberapa hal. Satu mengenai uh, apa tips upaya-upaya uh, konservasi di dalam masa pandemi ini, tadi disebutkan ada dua hal penting. Satu, bersikaplah positif. Karena dari pandemik ini terjadi, sekarang tidak ada uh, pengerusakan karena tidak ada pembangunan, tidak ada kegiatan-kegiatan yang mengancam uh, pusaka kita. Kemudian yang kedua, uh, tidak ada polusi juga karena uh, lingkungan menjadi kembali menjadi baik. Dan kemudian uh, hal lain dari tips untuk upaya konservasi ini adalah pahami bahwa kita sekarang menjadi uh, borderless, tidak ada batas. Karena kita seperti sekarang kita bisa bertemu dengan teman-teman dari berbagai negara dimanapun ada di dalam monitor kita dan itu kita bisa meningkatkan kreativitas kita. Kemudian poin yang kedua itu adalah mengenai hal shifting perubahan paradigma tidak hanya tangible bahwa ternyata hal-hal pentingnya lainnya ada mengenai nilai mengenai intangible menjadi menguat tentang jiwa dan rasa yang uh, merupakan tradisi yang turun-temurun yang menjadi uh, menjiwai pusaka-pusaka kita. Hal-hal fisik kita, itu yang sekarang dapat kita kembangkan. Karena dengan kita berdiam di rumah, maka segala tradisi itu kembali bisa kita uh, pelajari kembali dan kita uh, kembangkan bersama. Dan kemudian hal penting lainnya adalah bahwa uh, bicara tentang heritage, heritage itu adalah tidak ada hubungan dengan tidak ada hal tentang pariwisata. Tadi Pak uh, Jui mengatakan UNESCO sebenarnya tidak ada T-nya, tidak ada tourismnya. Jadi yang lebih penting itu adalah tentang edukasi atau pendidikan. Karena tadi Pak Yohanes juga mengatakan ada lima poin. Yang pertama tentang bagaimana tentang uh, aspek ekonomi, kemudian uh, autentisitas dari budaya, kemudian juga masalah sosial inklusivitas, juga uh, kelestarian lingkungan dan uh, integrasi dari hal-hal yang terkait dengan fisik. Dan itu semua uh, peran kita adalah dalam hal pendidikan. Nah, ini juga menjawab pertanyaan-pertanyaan tadi yang berkembang. Uh, so, I think so, I just make a brief summary in uh, Indonesian language. Uh, now is uh, the time, still left two minutes. <laughs> Maybe very brief, uh, starting from Kanita and then Ibu Salma and then the last is Pak Yohanes Widodo. Please, Kanita. Okay, for me, I think that I would like very much to use this occasion, like a pandemic occasion, like uh, to link people together, things together, share experience together, and okay, protect our heritage together. This is the point that I would like to send this message to everyone. Okay, thank you, thank you Kanita. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, thank you. Share uh, the hand. Heritage and the responsibility is really the same with yeah. the, the topic of the yeah. World Heritage yeah, Day. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Share culture, <laughs> share heritage, and share yeah. responsibility. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank Ibu you. Salma? Yes, I actually have seen Kanita said. And I yeah. uh, really appreciate uh, how she expressed, you know, this thought that we should actually come closer together. Mm -hmm. um, so now, you know, it's the time for us to think together and to reflect and uh, think what can come out of this because You're right. what is going to, what is mm -hmm. ahead of us, what is going to come out of this uh, after uh -huh. the lockdown, where are mm -hmm. we heading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And the last, uh, Professor Widodo, there is also a question from you. I don't know <laughs> if you can wrap it up also with uh, your keyword, <laughs> please. What questions? There is no yeah. question. It's too close, right? So I think <laughs> no. I think one one very important thing that we learn in if we are summarized in one word is uh, how we learn to fall in love again, mm -hmm. and wow. how we learn how to make love 
uh, useful and and uh, giving life to other people and our heritage. So the key is really uh, when, when you love, I mean you you will not um, think about anything else rather than just you, you you lost yourself. So stop being selfish. It's not about selfless, but you have to be selfless. You have to bring give whatever you have in whatever position that you have to the better world. Just like the movie that you show us before the show, right? It's about the new world, about the better world. And how to make that world getting better, how if there is no love, right? You, you, you sing Beatles and all this, uh, all song 1970s. It's all about this. It's about, it's about uh, how, how we really uh, become able to empathize. Because empathy is the key, that we don't take more than we should, that we only take what we need, not what we want. If there is a iPhone 11, whatever, just appear, <laughs> or Samsung, whatever, I don't care because I can still use my, my iPhone 5. You know, it doesn't really matter. Is it really need that tools? So I think that value has become very, very crucial now. You know, how to, to return the, the, the value is on the top. You know, in education, there are three different circles. One is the knowledge. Knowledge is very easy. Just Google. It's everywhere. Download. It's easy to learn something, to memorize something. But knowledge is limited. Second is the is psychomotoric. Your skill, your ability to use your hand, to use tools, to make robots, to use all these things, so to make things. But the third one is the affections, the value system. And this one is the most important thing. And easy to rot, but also at the same time also should be able to revive and how to revive these this values. And the key, of course, is just one word. I think that is the last one, it's something that can restart everything new. To give back the soul to the city, give back the soul to the, our heritage. And that will be the key to success of, of, of um, us to survive this COVID situation. So if not, then of course, no need to talk about uh, continuations of the next generation. You just stop here and then give up. You know, just like what yeah. I love coffee. So I want to have coffee. And <laughs> it's really clear, <laughs> Professor Johannes. <laughs> Thank you. I think so, your last sentences is also answering the two questions left. Is uh, from Tri Salim and also from Lee is asking yes. about what to do. So, so you again to remind us for the best thing is about education. And, yeah. then, and uh, also there is uh, some other question. I just saw this because uh, the last from one from Lee. Yeah, about there the will old be house. no return to the past. You know, mm -hmm. history is always moving forward. The past is the heritage of the present. The presence is the heritage of the future. So whatever we do now, what happened to the world today, will be the heritage and memorial for the future. So we are making heritage now. So for example, if in the past, we always live in the high density, high rise situations, very crowded situations, like what happened in Singapore. Today, we have 900 new cases from the, 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 the workers, the military, the, the you know, foreign workers, they live in a very packed, uh, under, you know, very, very bad conditions where they help to build very luxurious, very shiny Singapore. So it's a scandalous, you see. So we, we sometimes forget about the people who live in the slums that really have become the machines of the economy of the city. So I think we need to really think about social equality, social justice. Same things that I, I just mentioned, uh, the, the five principles. The, the, the social, um, social, uh, uh, what's it? The economic viability, cultural authenticity, social inclusivity, physical integrity, environmental sustainability, all these things is the, the things that we need to use to rethink about our uh, next paradigm. Okay. Thank you, Professor Johannes. I think the time is, uh, is already, <laughs> you already have uh, no more time left now. Oh. Yeah. There are five things uh, we note and we learn a lot from Professor Johannes and also 
the experience uh, from Ibu Salma and Kanita. Yeah, I just would like to uh, thank you everybody for all the honor speakers uh, to have uh, all of you among us uh, this evening. And uh, I think this is uh, not uh, the closing. We still can contact Professor Johannes, Ibu Salma or Kanita in terms yes. Instagram, yeah, Facebook, and Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the borderless between us. And yeah. uh, I want to close with this one sentence. Uh, it's it's an old sentence from Roland Silva, but uh, you mentioned in this session. It's about it's not only love, but love to conserve our heritage. So, uh, yes. So it's the time to uh, uh, love and then try to fall in love again with our heritage. Okay, thank you. So I will Can we give sing together? The time to BPPIT. Thank you very much. Naha. Applause okay. for uh, the speakers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. Naha. Thank you. Very honored for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pajuanas. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.